the 2023 presidential election now three horse race between the candidates of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, All Progressive Congress, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar. He just concluded pool. Don't talk him. This is not the for today. My name is ADS. I am going to run him as the hot. No time. According to the result of the pool, where they commissioned by the ANAP Foundation and conducted by NOI Pools Limited, Peter Obi, they lead the race with 21% of the votes in the pool. His vote gives him 8% lead over APC's Tinubu and PDP's Atiku, who get 13% of the votes to end up as joint second in the pool. The presidential candidate of the Nigerian People's Party, NNPP, Rabio Kwankwasu, collects only 3% of the votes to come forth. <laughs> now, the spokespersons of the PDP, APC, and NNPP don't reject uh, the poor result. They say, eh, the poor result does not in any way reflect the will of the people. Come 2023. Now, the spokespersons of the PDP, APC, and NMPP don't reject the poor results. They say, eh, the poor result does not in any way reflect the will of the people. Come 2023. First, make we hear from the spokesperson of the NNPP, where in name now, Abdul Mumin Jobrin. Uh, NOI in 2015 uh, projected clearly that Jonathan is going to win uh, the, uh, the, the election. Jonathan lost the election. Many other work that they've done all have been proven uh, wrong. There is no any work that they've done where you can say that, that the projections are right or anything. Well, that is the extent that I will go in giving any recognition to that statement. It is absolutely false. It's not a representation of a reality on ground, particularly if you are talking about the northern part of the country. Repeatedly, I've said this. And in a matter of three, four months, the facts will emerge. Rabi Ukonkos, who has the northern part of Nigeria, locked down. And let me say this. Apart from northern part of the country, the two other parties, even though we are not here to discuss the two, two other parties, the case of APC, APC is damaged already. And that is why you see what APC does is to run his campaign around Aswaju, whom I believe that he is a good pilot. But the problem is not Aswaju, the problem is a party. The party is damaged. So it's like saying you have a good pilot and you have a bad aircraft. So what APC is asking Nigerians to do is to go and fly in a bad aircraft because they have a good pilot. The major difference between APC and PDP is that PDP is damaged. I mean, APC is damaged. But PDP is saying, yes, we agree we are bad, but we are better than APC. What people keep saying is that uh, Konkoso doesn't have a reach in the southern part of the uh, country. We don't like to pretend. Where he has completely locked down is the northern part of the country. But we are making sufficient inroad in the southern part of the country. That is a no. The spokesperson of the NMPP just confirmed, say, eh, his principal and the presidential candidate of the NMPP will be Rabio Kwankwasu, na regional candidate. He only have control of the north and nothing in the south. But that did not reflect in the poor result to him lose for north, wutu, wutu. <laughs> Make we check out the reaction of the PDP spokesperson, will be Dane Buala. A normal poll that will attract credibility will be a poll that clearly, in one breath as you release the report, you must also release the sample size and the margin of error. These are basics. Mm -hmm. Because the sample size and the margin of error will help in identifying whether the polling is, was actually carried out correctly or not. Then you can stretch further to ask for the sampling. Was it done by a phone call? If it was done by a phone call, then the people who didn't have phone probably were not part of the polling. You also go to the extent of asking the demographics and then the place where the polling was carried out. I know they said it's a rample, I mean a random uh, sampling. But then, because of the result, I am tempted to believe that this polling was carried out online because Peter will be online 
has a measure of people who are very active for him, much more than the other candidate. And I will tell you why. Because there was an algorithm search, and uh, yes, algorithm and data analytics that was carried out that came up with a finding that 57.5% of people who follow Peter Obi and engage for him on social media do not live in Nigeria. In fact, majority of whom are bots on Twitter. They are not real human beings. If you take away 57.5% of the people who are active for him, who probably live abroad and they don't have voters card, they are likely not to come to vote, then what it means is that Peter Obi is basking in the euphoria of hallucination. For you to become a president, you must have the highest vote and 25% in 24 states. Peter Obi, if he's able to win three states in Nigeria, I will throw the biggest party for him. Hmm. He believes the pool was carried out online and that majority of Peter Obi's followers are abroad. Hmm. Him even say if Peter Obi wins two states in the 2023 presidential election, that is winning 25% of the total vote cast in just two states, then he, Bwala, go throw the biggest party for him. We be Peter Obi. <laughs> this is serious. So then, the spokesperson of the APC, where he named now, Bayo Onanuga, Abi Onanuga, eh <laughs> he can't talk his own. Him say, I believe something we just said on somewhere, and concocted a so called poll. If you look at it, if I, the way you have to dismiss it is this look at under Southwest, the NOI poll gave our candidates 18% in the Southwest. That is our candidate's own base. How can anybody see that anywhere? You don't even need to do any opinion poll to know that that is the, 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 the stronghold of our candidate. And then they went to the notice and gave our candidate again 18%. Whereas the same people gave Peter B for a 64% in the Southeast. You can see that there's no logic in this thing. Historically, the Southwest people will back their own. Everybody knows that. Just if if uh, NYPO can say the Southeast people are going to back Peter B, why is it not good for the Southwest? This guy, logic, now say. If the Southeast can go for their own, as shown in the poll results, eh, why will the Southwest not go for their own too? Obisco sixty-eight percent in the Southeast, and Tinubu score eighteen percent in the Southwest. So he believes say the pool they biased and misleading. <laughs> Anyways, them don't talk their own. Oh. The power to win election, they with the people. Now them go decide when the time comes. But one thing for sure, I say, whoever will win 2023 presidential election will not be a regional candidate. Eh -eh. It will be one accepted by all Nigerians. Now make we hear the winner of the pool will be Mr. Peter Obi speak with CNN on how him go govern Nigeria if him eventually become Mr. President come 2023. Mr. Obi, thank you so much for being with us. You are certainly the most popular presidential candidate in Nigeria right now among young people. There is just so much momentum behind you. But here's the problem. Nigerians are used to being disappointed by their leaders. And when you think about some of the problems that are facing the country right now, they're systemic. I'm talking about corruption, I'm talking about oil theft, I'm talking about insecurity, I'm talking about the fiscal hole that Nigeria is in right now. Can all of that really be solved by one person? Well, if you have a leader that is competent, have the capacity and commitment to start dealing with it, you're not going to solve it overnight. But there will be a clear, visible, measurable attempt to deal with it. And they are not they are things that are solvable. They are things that can be dealt with decisively. But you have to have a, a leader that, if you look at what he's been able to do in the past, 
you can say yes. If indeed you do become Nigeria's we have an economic next problem. president. Um, Nigeria, as you know, is broke. It is barely able to service its debt. It spends so much more than it earns. What are your plans? Just from a concrete perspective, what are your plans to take Nigeria's economy off of life support? Well, a variety of things. One is that you have to deal decisively with the issue of security. It's impacting negatively on your economy today. You have to deal with it head on because you have to get your farmers to go back to farm and start ensuring that the vast land of the north are invested, are cultivated on. You have to start pulling people out of poverty as quickly as possible. You have to reduce aggressively cost of governance and deal with the issue of corruption. Anyone who knows anything about Nigeria knows that it has this embarrassing reputation of despite the fact that it is Africa's largest oil producer, it imports refined fuel. Yeah, so Obi don't make the most effort so far reaching out to people and granting interviews to explain how best him go preside over Nigeria as president. Him don't do vocal about his ambition from the one. Going by this observation, I think the poor result by ANAP, no day totally wrong. Truth is, come 2023, Nigeria will get a new commander in chief of the armed forces. I beg, follow select who will become our next Mr. President. Make sure you vote. In the end, so make sure you vote. Your vote will count. I'll see you again. You follow us on all our social media channels showing on your screen right now. Until I see you again, my name is ADS. Signing out.